for our live stream. Can you guys hear me? We're going to see here in just one second. And 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, the music ends. Mark Borchert, friend of Bungie, one of the oldest friends of Bungie, asked for some music ahead of time. That was not that kind of girl. It was from Yankee Militia, <laughs> from my band. From my band, Yankee Militia. We have quite a group of people here, and I actually put that music together at the last minute. I wasn't planning on doing that. Figured it out in about the last five minutes. And uh, we're still starting right out at 7 o'clock. How cool is that? I like made it on time. Hello, Murder Incorporated Hunting. Good to hear from you. Good to have you here. Derek Bruce, hello. How are y'all doing? I'm doing great. I hope you are too. Mark Borchard, thanks again for joining us. Jennifer Robinson, good to hear from you again. Jo Joey, cool. Huntwise, JDR, what's up, everybody? Hopefully, everybody is staying healthy and staying virus free and all that fun stuff. Uh, Mark Borchard again say, says it sounds great. I'm glad to hear that. Derek Bruce, good hunting, y'all. Good hunting indeed. And hello, Tim Adams. We've got a whole bunch of people on here. Boy, I'll tell you, this is what a collection of people. Daniel Garcia, hello down there in Texas. I hope that you are doing well. I'm betting you guys are, you guys are probably way ahead of us as far as the spring gobbler is concerned. You're way ahead of us. Moose Junction Hunter, always great to hear from you. Thank you very much for joining us. Crossbows and broadheads. Hey, Dave, you have a familiar icon, crossbows and broadheads. I'm wondering if you're not someone else I know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Dennis Glock, good to hear from you. Man, look at the people on here. Nathan Welton, Tim Adams, got all kinds of people. Robert Peck, good to hear from you. 10-4 Rich, loud and clear. Robert Peck, it is great to hear from you from up there in Massachusetts. Man, we got a whole bunch of people. I can go through here all night. Dean Sierney, good to hear from you again. Michael Boomer, I, hello to Vermont. Hello up there. I hope all is going well. Dual Threat Outdoors, hello to you. I just actually checked out another point that you had shared with me, another waypoint in our scouting. Let's talk a little bit about what we're, just to give you a quick update, and then we're going to get into some turkey talk here, right? And the quick update is this. I have pretty much, pretty much finished our spring scouting. Scouting with Bungie has pretty much come to an end as of today. All those vlogs and all that fun stuff. The vlogs are gonna continue because I enjoy doing them. I actually was never big on the vlog and stuff, but I've had fun putting those together. The video editing, that's one of the things I like doing, right? That's one of the things I enjoy. So that's one of the reasons that I've been doing that stuff. It's worked out quite well. I hope you've enjoyed those. The scouting was really the primary goal, however. Mm. Telephone call, I should have should turned that off. <laughs> Um, I'm usually better about that. Actually, most of the time I have my phone turned off, but I've been working from home, and for that reason, I've gotten in a habit of leaving the phone on. Isn't that weird? So that's just how it is. It's just a, a change in things. It's just a change in the way that I've been doing things here. The spring scouting, though, like I was telling you, next weekend starts the youth season for spring gobbler. So Genevieve and I will not be going out there for the spring gobbler, for the spring scouting. I don't want to do that because I don't want to interfere with some young kids hunting. I think that that is far too important to me to have, and to that person, for, to, to have me 
traipsing all over the place when I'm just looking for deer sign and trying to plan this fall's upcoming season. The following weekend, we have Spring Gobbler opening. Now, that doesn't open until like May 2nd here in Pennsylvania. I know a lot of you guys on here, Daniel Garcia, um, he says he probably he doesn't really have a place to turkey hunt. He's actually gotten back to me there. And that's unfortunate. I feel bad about that. Spring Gobbler, they do have some nice, I think you got Rio's down here in Texas, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit different. We have the Eastern uh, Gobbler here, the Eastern Turkey. So a little bit different, but they're different subspecies, whatever you want to call them. But I don't want to be traipsing on somebody else's grounds, and I want to get, next weekend, I'm going to be getting some of my different spots ready for spring gobbler. And I'm going to go out there and take a big old stab at it. Now, those, when I talk about those scouting vlogs, the vlogs and all that stuff, we've had fun doing that stuff. And I really appreciate the feedback. A lot of you guys I see on here, I see your comments and suggestions as well on those vlogs. And I really appreciate that because I need help with this new venture, with getting out there for deer on state game lands. It's a new thing for me. I'm familiar with deer sign. I'm familiar with deer habitat, deer patterns, and all that fun stuff. But man, looking at it and piecing together a new puzzle is a different thing on state game lands. Very similar to the private property, but there are certain limitations that you don't have on private property. So that's been a neat adjustment for, for me. Last week in the vlogs there, I was on there. Got the Diet Cherry 7-Up. Boy, you really come full circle when you're drinking Diet Cherry 7-Up. In my set, in my 20s, I wouldn't have been drinking that, but nonetheless, that's what we're drinking. But I saw fit to embarrass myself thoroughly last week with the video that I uploaded, and I took some good heat for that, a good-natured ribbing, and I appreciate it. But the turkey calling and all that good stuff, you guys let me have it on here. Not all of you. Most of you are very supportive, and I really appreciate that. Uh, there were a few people that were like, yeah, yeah it's pretty bad turkey calling. So we're going to work on that today and I'm going to get your feedback. What I did is I went and I pulled out this box. Can you see that? I have this box ready to be opened up and shared with you. Now this is the call that I was using last week. I'm looking at the screen and checking those levels. You are not going to get the full effect. Believe me. When I use this, it is the most luxurious, sultry-sounding hen you have ever heard in your life. I'm just kidding. It's not. It's terrible. But the microphone, you are going to lose a lot. I've got the mic turned down a little bit so that it does not, you know, it doesn't interfere with, doesn't, you know, distort or anything like that. Because some of these calls get a little bit loud. That's one of the things, of course, that you want a turkey call. You want it to carry a little bit so that you can hear some other stuff. Uh, we've got Huntwise JDR in here talking about the murder of beagles. And I was thinking, when I, when I said I don't think it's a murder, murder incorporated hunting, I think is a subtle reference to crows, a murder of crows, which is like the coolest thing, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I, so I was throwing that out there. When we talk about the murder of beagles, um, that's why I was, uh, I threw that out there. But I was thinking of you, murder incorporated, when I said that. And Huntwise JDR has brought that up. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, MJ Haas, don't I mean vlog? <laughs> yeah. Let's start a new thing, man. I'll just keep saying it until it sticks. Everybody will call them vlogs. It's funny, just to give you a real quick feedback on here, um, on that, on, on exactly where that vlog comes from. There is, if you're into cameras, and I don't have my nice camera up here, but I do have a nice lens. This is my Sigma lens. I love this lens. Beautiful thing. 17 to 55, 17 to 50, I guess it is. But it's a nice Sigma lens. When you shoot with DSLR cameras, there's a way to to draw down the saturation, draw down the sharpening, all that stuff, and you shoot a flat image so that when you put it in the computer later, you can dress it up and make it look really fancy. I've been doing that since the very beginning of Death by Bungie. I don't when you take those images out of the camera, they look terrible. The V log is a reference to like Canon has something they call C log. I think Sony calls it V log, and uh, Panasonic has some other name for it. I don't know what it is, but there's like a, you know there's different kinds of logs. It's called log footage. So when I say vlog, I actually say vlog because it's vlog footage. So you are in the know. This live stream, I've just given you information that nobody knows else. You know, there's like a the thing about Death by Bungie is it kind of merges camera stuff with hunting stuff, right? It kind of merges the two sometimes. And vlog is an example of that. So Mark Borcher, not bad. No iced coffee. Not tonight. Not tonight. Moose Junction Hunter, no Kool-Aid. No, believe it or not, when I've been uh, going to the uh, grocery store, we do have some Kool-Aid I, I can make, but I ran out of space in the 
refrigerator because we're stocking up because of this pandemic stuff that you might have heard about. <laughs> Some of you probably heard about that. Some of you, probably most of us are sick of hearing about it. But yeah, that uh, we actually didn't have room for the big pitchers anymore in the refrigerator. So I went to, I bought two liter bottles of soda and I've been just drinking them, putting the ice in it and all that good stuff. And it saves on refrigerator space. So that's the world we live in now. But um, no matter what you use, Moose Junction Hunter says, just do it with confidence. Man, that's pretty good. Tim Adams, thank you. I'm glad it sounds pretty good to you. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, Industry Newsom is on here bragging about how Virginia started a week ago. Well, good for you. <laughs> we start like two weeks late in Pennsylvania. I firmly believe that. I have said it before, and I believe that, and I will say it again. Moose Junction Hunter, thank you very much, and I agree with you that um, you, you have to have a certain level of confidence with whatever you use. And the problem that I run into, I will sit right over there in that chair, in this easy chair, and I watch videos. I've got a big TV up here. This is my little TV room, right? And I watch... There's probably not a YouTube video that you could point me to that I haven't already watched on turkey calling. Mouth calls, box calls, you name it. I have used them all. I've watched all the videos, and I have gone through it over and over. I just got done watching two episodes of Bone Collector, right, with Michael Waddell, and if he can't teach me to call turkeys, nobody can, so there's just no, there's no hope for me. But you're right, though. Moose Junction Hunter makes a great point. you got to have a certain level of confidence. The problem that I faced every year, I get pretty good in the living room, pretty good here in the TV room, and then I go out in the woods and I forget what, I, what sound I'm trying to make. And I end up making a different sound. So that's the problem. So there it is. And Murder Incorporated Hunting has confirmed that it is, in fact, a murder of crows that he's referencing. So let's open up the turkey call box here. You already heard this glorious thing. I love that little thing. This one just fits good in my mouth. And if you've tried mouth calls and you know what I'm talking about there, you find one that works and you got to go for it. Opening up this box, this is like Christmas. This is like Christmas. And the first thing I'm going to pull out is this big thing. What is that? <laughs> I'm not going to be using this. <laughs> This is what you do. You want to have some fun? Get yourself one of those new decoy fans that you can stalk behind and then use this, use that uh, call and then wander around the woods and see what happens. I am just kidding. Don't do that. That's awful. Terrible, terrible advice. Don't do that, please. Please don't do that. Uh, Robert Peck, you have a box call coming. I do indeed, sir, because he's a smart guy. Check this out. A box call. This is the, I think it's Quaker Boy. I got a bunch of Quaker Boys, and it's just because they sell them at a local convenience store that we call the Dandy. Yes, I can buy deer calls and turkey calls at the Dandy. How awesome is that? And you can buy live bait at the Dandy, at the convenience store, at a gas station here in Pennsylvania. There are vending machines, vending machines, that sell night walkers and mealworms and all that good stuff. Can, can you believe that? Can you believe it? So there you go. There's the box call, right? And again, I'm going to... Got to watch the, sand, the volume there. I don't want to spike that volume too much. But there's the box call. Another thing I want to tell you. This is probably the last evening I will ever get for this spring gobbler season to use these calls in the house. I have been blowing on this thing like every day. Because I know I'm working from home. So I'll take a break, come in here and watch a video. and you know, you know, The family gets tired of this stuff. <laughs> You can't watch TV in the other room. You're just getting into a good movie and all of a sudden, you know, that, that turns things around, doesn't it? You guys doing that stuff? Is there anybody else out there that's doing that? <laughs> Let's look at some comments. I love the comments in you guys, and I don't spend nearly enough time looking at the comments. I really believe that. I got a whole box to go through. We've got, I like to keep these things around an hour, maybe a little bit under, just not take up too much of your time. Kaboom362 says, practice in your car while you're driving. I should do that. In fact, I did that on the way back from the state game lands today when my daughter and I were out went out scouting. On the way back, she was doing the drive, and I sat there blowing on this, and I'm like, how's that sound? How does that sound? And she got pretty sick of that pretty fast, but she was very supportive, and I appreciate it. Well, Huntwise JDR is going out on May 9th. That is a good plan, and that's a good time of year. Really, the truth is, anytime you can get out for spring gobbler, it's the spring. I mean, it's just awesome. How much better, what more can you ask for, you know? Dual Threat Outdoors agrees that we should be two to three weeks earlier than it is. The Game Commission really insists that they've got it timed just right, and I am sure that is true for the preservation of the species. However, Bungie and I are less concerned about the preservation of the species when we have yet to kill a spring gobbler together. 
I've not killed a spring gobbler with a crossbow. So I'm let me get one under my belt, then I'll worry about the preservation of the species. <laughs> okay, how selfish is that? I know that's terrible. That's awful, but you get the point though. I've really got to get out there and get this done. And I feel like, man, you know, I'm, the calling is a big part of that. The location's a big part of that. I've always committed to the same property where I grew up. I did kill a gobbler there once before, and I will show you this just to show you that I do in fact have some ability out there in the woods. That is me several years ago with a shotgun gobbler that I killed. It's a nice, mature gobbler, I think nine, nine and a half inch uh, uh, beard and uh, three quarter inch spurs or something, you know, a real nice bird, You've got him mounted out there in the living room. He looks fantastic. And if it weren't for uh, the limitations of live streaming, I would go show you that guy, but that was pretty cool. But I called him in, okay. Um, I'm gonna show you what I called him in with. It was this thing, a pot call, right? The slate call. And I did it with this stick, this old hickory stick right here. What do you think of that, huh? But uh, you know, there you got this one. Very deep sounding. I need to sand this and get it dressed up. <laughs> the problem with these two is every once in a while I get out there in the woods and it gets a nice dew on it, and then all of a sudden it just slides across there, and all of a sudden I'm not making any sound. You know that's that's really good. So, it, you know, if anything can ruin my confidence more, I don't. I think it's a nice wet slate call. That yeah, does not help. But back to the comments there. I was watching the hunting public turkey videos and copy them while I watch. You know, that's what you do. And the, and I watch, here's another thing, Moose Junction Hunter's talking about that with these different videos. You watch five videos and all five of the callers sound a little bit different. Some of them say, you're supposed to say uh, chut, chut, right? That's the word you say. None of the words that they suggest work for me. I don't know why that is, but you know, Okay, I mean, it's a call, right? It's a sound. Then uh, other ones are saying cholt, right? I think cholt is actually what's written in my instructions. Mm. <laughs> but those aren't necessarily, then I go listen to the actual hens and it sounds different. You know, the hens are real high pitched. And the Mossberg guy, I just watched a video again today. The Mossberg guy, I've watched him several times, real neat guy. Um, but the guy that they, the Mossberg has doing their videos makes a point that um, you always watch the hen's mouth in real life. Their mouth is always open up and down like that. You know, they don't just sit there. And, you see a lot of turkey callers. This is, I'm taking it directly from his video, but. <laughs> see a lot of turkey callers not moving their mouth a lot, but the hen actually opens the mouth an awful lot. So, I don't know, just throwing that out there, but you do see it, it, it does differ from one to the other. And the hunting public guys, they have it down with turkey hunting, there's no question about that. You know, when I when I think of the turkey hunting videos out there, um, actually there's quite a few good ones. There are quite a few good ones, but they're definitely at the top of the list as far as YouTube is concerned, I really believe that. So, Daniel Garcia says it's called turkey fever, 100%, man, I can tell you that right now. I'm. I've got that. It's funny, deer takes priority for me and I always think about crossbows and deer hunting and I work on deer hunting all year long. I read about it, I watch videos, the whole thing. I'm, I'm so immersed in deer hunting, that's what I think about all the time. And distant, you know, I would say that spring gobbler is almost a distant second in a sense that I put all this stuff away at the end of the season, I don't even get it out again, I don't even think about it. But it is so awesome once you get started doing it, that interaction with a, with a gobbler, you're making sounds and he's talking back to you. <coughs> it really is phenomenal. It is so top notch. Kaboom362, a Tom will usually respond when he hears that. I think he's referring to this dude right here. And that is why I have it, actually. If you are going to use a um, a gobbler decoy, or if you if you want to get a, a gobbler to, to strike up a conversation, that'll shock him into gobbling. And I think that Kaboom 362 is 100% right. Yeah, that's, there he is. Boom. That's like, that's what that's all about. Okay. And what else? I'm going to go through these comments here before I lose you all. Jeffrey Hammer says his dog is not in 
not enjoying these. I can just imagine. You know, I sit in here every once in a while, I'll get one of these out, and uh, the cats, they come around the corner like, what the heck's going on? You know, like, they're kind of curious when they hear it. If I can do a, a real soft one, you know, Neat thing about these, I can make any sound in the world. They're, they're just such a handy little, they're like a musical instrument, you know? But I do that kind of sound, the, the cats will come running, you know, that's not a problem. <laughs> Kaboom 362, 362. The advantage to a mouth call is that you can get, that you get to do it hands-free the way the turkey doesn't see any movement from the typical hand movement of the box call. That's 100% right. If I'm sitting right, right like this, right, you can do this and sit there with your... You know, and I have another one of these. Let's drag out the other one here somewhere. When I have, I have box call chalk also for the box call. So we can spiff that up later on if you want to. And then this one has a different striker, but um, this guy... That one really is, that one's a little louder. That's a more, um, th you know, th this one has the, the old hickory and all that good stuff, but pretty neat little calls. But the problem with those is, 100% right, is that you can't sit there hands-free and do it. You can't have the crossbow and then do this. You're going to end up, once the gobbler's in range, you can't necessarily get him to, if he comes in and that won't close the distance, you don't want to, but he's close enough where you can see your decoy, you're risking something. If you're using one of these and moving your hands around, they're going to pick up on that. They have the world's greatest eyesight. Like, you can't touch that stuff. Not like deer. With deer, as long as you're not, like, waving your arms or something, you can pretty much reposition a little bit when they're kind of there and kind of onto you. Turkeys, that's not going to happen. In my experience, when I've had them close, switching my feet around just a little bit, they're gone. They're gone. If they see me blink and they take off. You know, i got big eyes, I guess. I don't know. But with this, with this, in theory, if he turns around, he's leaving again. Get him to turn around, maybe, or maybe run faster. I don't know. <laughs> One of those things. But anyway, that, that is the advantage to the mouth call, and that's why I keep striving to do that, trying to do that. So, Moose Junction Hunter, a turkey locator call, the uh, owl call. I see those. Those things are fantastic. That, that's what you. That's what most of those guys, when they go out in the woods, they do that stuff. That's for sure. The owl call there, especially when you're trying to roost them at night and find out where they are going, you know, where they are hanging out for the night and all that good stuff. Mark Borcher, some encouraging words. This is the year of the gobbler for you, Rich. Boy, I really hope so. Um, I really hope I can pull it off. I just think it would be so neat to be able to pull off this, the, the gobbler with a crossbow. Then I could say I, I've done it. You know, I've killed a gobbler, you know, but I just haven't pulled one off with a crossbow. And I think I, to really complete my uh, package here, you know, as far as death by bungee is concerned, it would be nice to have a spring gobbler with a crossbow. Michael Carmichael, thank you very much for the super chat. Hope you get a gobbler. Wish I had them in my area. Michael Carmichael, where, or Matthew's Carmichael, I'm sorry. Matthew Carmichael, where are you at? Oh, you're in, you're in Canada, and your part of Canada does not have them. They don't go that far north, and I know I've talked to a couple other people on here who, uh, who are Canadians who do not have uh, gobblers. I know that some of Canada does, but not, uh, not all of them. They go up there quite a ways. So... Thank you for a comp for crossbows and broadheads. Likes the bird. Yep, got that. Quaker boy makes some nice things. The owners are championship callers. Should check out those YouTubes. Greg Sterbrilla. I shall do that. In fact, I have watched. I did watch a few of those today. Those uh, um, and I watched them today for the other call. This guy right here, huh? What do you think of that? This is one of the better sounding ones. Probably doesn't sound good on here, but 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 it's really easy to use, and you can put your little bit of thumb pressure. I think this is where I got that was from that Quaker Boy thing, and this is a Quaker Boy also, the Quaker Boy waterproof easy yelper. You know, don't knock these cheapo calls like this little guy. I, when I say cheapo, I'm what I mean is it's like, you know. It's not the elaborate thing with the, the hickory stick that's in, you know, got your name on it or whatever else, but fancy, right? And the box calls, love the box calls, these things. This is a Quaker boy also, because my other one split on me. This one's a little high-pitched. I think that's a little high-pitched, but you, 
mix it up a little bit. You sit in a blind with this box, you can have a whole bunch of fun, can't you? But with this guy, you put a little, I want I watched that Quaker Boy video, one of the things they talked about was, you can even put your finger on here for a little bit of pressure on here and just do a, do the little purring sounds and all that stuff. And you can do your, that is your clucking, right? You can do all that fun stuff. They're pretty versatile calls. I really like those. Pretty neat. And when they say waterproof, that is an advantage over this guy that gets a little bit of dew on it and all of a sudden it's not, like you aren't gonna make it straight. You're sitting here rubbing it on my coat and all that. I can just remember doing that and how frustrating that is. You get out there, you got a gobbler that maybe that you heard that reacted to your call and now I can't. Now I'm out of luck. Can't get them closer here. Oh. Old Grumpy Hunter pointing out that yes, in fact, he killed a turkey with a crossbow before I did. Yes, he did. That is a fact. <laughs> Wingbone calls MJ Haas. I do not have one of those. That would be that would kind of complete the collection here of stuff that I've got. I've got a, a box of stuff here, more stuff to play play with than you can shake a stick at. But yeah. So crossbows and broadheads also seconding the Quaker boy likes that stuff. That's good to hear. New Jersey opens tomorrow morning for Piney Woods. It's going to be a long night. Yeah, you'll be sit, you'll be staying up tonight, won't you? Um, that is awesome because you got to get up early and all that good stuff. You are absolutely right. That's pretty cool. Um, and I wish you the absolute best from Death by Bungie tomorrow, Piney Woods. Please let me know how you make out. I do hope that you have good success and at least send me some pictures or something on Facebook or or whatever. You know, let me know if you have some good stuff, some good luck out there. Jeffrey Hammer is. Sandpaper, he is saying, yeah, I do need to get after these things. They, uh, I watched a video on that today. Sand them one way. This is the Mossberg guy, I think, was telling me. Sand it this way, and then call this way. That's what he was saying. Like, you're going to sand this way, and call this way. Call, you know, against the sanding, is what he claimed. Um, it's kind of funny, though. You do get, like, conflicting advice from different people. So... Ralph Danisco Jr. Hey, Rich, Jersey in the house. Good luck and be safe in your season. Ditto, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hello down to New Jersey. Someday I'm going to go to New Jersey and shoot a big buck. That's my plan. I think that I, something about the more urban style hunting that I really like, not that where I hunt in Maryland is all that urban. It's urban to me from where I'm hunting, where I grew up hunting, but, but like that kind of hunting, I really, really do enjoy that. So, yeah. Glass pot call can handle water. Philip Lang, thank you, sir. That is a good tip, and I think that and that would if the sanding doesn't help, and if you're worried about the all that stuff. I mean, I already got two of these things, but getting a third one, man, what, what the heck, you know? I actually one year I was thinking of getting these custom made with Death by Bungie logos on them, but they're like it'd be like ninety dollars a piece or something. It was just ridiculous. It was way too expensive to to you know get a whole bunch of those made. But I thought that would be pretty cool. Old Grumpy Hunter, Kentucky, opened yesterday. I've not seen anything other than two on camera in a year. Well, let's see who can get the first spring gobbler this year, Old Grumpy Hunter. huh? We'll see. I think come the meet and greet, you and I will both still be working on it, probably. If I, But I hope not you. I hope you have good success. I hope we both do. I really do. I really hope we both can convert on these this year. But, uh, but if I get one and you don't, I would be happy because then I would be caught up. So how's that? <laughs> Moose Junction Hunter, do a C on the slate. Don't lift the striker. Yeah, I'm. I need practice. Um, it's not. You're not drawing circles, and I and I keep drawing circles. So let's get the other one. See this one. This one quit squawking on me already. But there's no doubt that if I'm hunting in a blind, when I go out there, I will have all of these in there. I like the C. That is good. That sounds good. It. it puts the high part, it makes the high part a little bit shorter and exaggerates the short, the lower part. I do like that. That's pretty good. Thank you for the tip. Thank you very much. Destry Newsom is saying, that's it, Rich. That's all I use. I bet she's referring to, Destry Newsom is probably referring to that is what I'm thinking, but I could be wrong. Those are, those are, yeah, push buttons. They've been around forever. No knocking here. I have one. Yep. They are pretty cool. The box call is all the money. If you could take that to the bank, set it up in a ground blind. Yeah, the, the ground blind gives you the advantage because at least you can call them in and keep calling and then have the crossbow. You can sit on a nice, comfortable seat. That's way better than not sitting on a comfortable seat. The problem with spring gobblers, 
half an hour of sitting on the ground. I, my legs are numb and everything else. But if you got the crossbow right there handy, sitting on a nice bench, nice big heavy bench, right? And I'm going to show those benches off. People have asked about those benches that I use in the blinds. And I'm going to do a video on those too. But if you're sitting right there with that, then you can lift that crossbow up and you can sit there and leave the calls right there on the bench and pick them up and use them and then when you're ready pick that up so you can get away with a little bit more in a blind as long as you're really blacked out because man they can see right through that blind they can see right in there good i think crossbows and broadheads that logo idea is a cool one yeah i think I'm, someday we'll do stuff like that i'm gonna i'm gonna increase the amount of death by bungee uh paraphernalia out there you know i think that more of that stuff is cool that's pretty fun fun stuff mark coulter Hi, Rich. I am thinking of buying a property in Titusville, Pennsylvania. Is that a good area for deer? I would not be surprised. I don't know anything about Titusville off the top of my head, but I'm. it's going to vary from just like every part of the state. Pennsylvania is a great state for deer. There's lots of deer here, but you're going to have to, you know, one property is not the same as the property next door. That's a fact. you got to look at them close. I guarantee you Titusville, Pennsylvania can produce a property for you with some nice deer, but you're just going to have to look at them. So we're getting some good feedback here. I really appreciate it, you guys, for telling me. Some of you guys are getting, you're very, you know, uh, responsive and telling me that the the calls are sounding pretty good. So, so that's pretty cool. MJ Haas, a cursive E. Let's hear it. A cursive E. We'll try that out. Is it an upside down E or is it this E? I'm going to try with that E, but that ain't going to work. Well, actually, the back side of that E. Oops, it gives you the the C effect of the E is working. If I were to the, it's almost like an O if I do it upside down. Kind of neat. Tyler Sitar, do you use decoys? Any thoughts on them? I do use decoys. I have the Montana decoys. I've got the Ms. Perfect, and I've got the um, Super Jake or whatever it is. I don't know. But give me your thoughts on decoys, too, if you don't mind. If you got, if you guys, when do you use decoys, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to use a hen decoy. I actually have two hen decoys and one Jake. And I've used every combination of them. But I had a gobbler last year come in. He saw that Jake. I hope that's all he saw, not me moving. But he saw the Jake and took off, and he just wanted nothing to do with it. It was probably a subordinate Tom. It was not the dominant Tom or whatever. But I don't care about that. I want a Tom or a Jake or something with a beard that is in the turkey classification. That's, that's what I'm looking for for my first turkey. Whatever it is, just a nice clean shot and take it home. Know and brag about it. That's that's what I'm looking for. So decoys, but I'm thinking because of that, the decoys I'll use, I'm only using one ten and just throw it up there and do the calls. Because we start a little bit late too. Remember that. We don't start until May. May second. That's the first time that I can get out there. Plus we've had the cold this cold spell. We had frost. I had to scrape the windshield this morning to go scouting. Like we had frost on the cars. April 19th. What's that all about? April frost brings May something or other, right? So there's my thoughts on the decoys, but I'd like to have a decoy. Um, I, I definitely will use the decoys from most of the time and set them up and try and get like, you know, I'll, I'll be popping a blind up here and all that good stuff. I really do appreciate the support. Kaboom 362 Moose Junction Hunter. You guys are right there for them every week, and I really appreciate the, the feedback, and I appreciate the support. I want to pull this off here. I, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> some good advice here. I really appreciate that. we got people buying some new... Uh, <laughs> we got some people bringing some... Uh, are buying some new crossbows, all that good stuff. Half strutter. The, that's the half strutter Jake, I think, um, Moose Junction Hunters talk about with the decoys. That one, I think that's what the Jake that I have is. It's, it's not Jake perfect. I don't know what it is. Um, I'll have to dig that out, actually. Maybe next week we'll talk about decoys as I get ready to do this sort of thing. But um, but the Jake, and I did look at some of the, the ideas here with the hen, you know, the Jake coming up on the hen, and the Jake is in like quarter strut or half strut, something like that. But I just, I mean, I pushed that 
that one gobbler that I had, a, I mean, last year, this gobbler was coming on the string. And I was calling, I was tucked in pretty good down on the maple flats there on the hardwood flats. And I could see him coming from a distance. I could see his face is beat red. He's like just strutting and everything else. And he's coming right up the path. I mean, he's coming right along. And then when he broke the trees where he could see my decoys, he stopped and I didn't call. I mean, I don't think I pushed him with the calls. It could be my calling. I could have blinked. I could have moved. You know, who knows? Could be any number of mistakes that I had made. But I think he saw those decoys. I just got to feel like he just didn't want to be there. I use a jake that is prone or sitting down for that reason. And that, there you go. You know, the position of that decoy, I go back and look at the video. Another nice thing about doing the videos and stuff is I do have video and photographs probably of the setup that I was using at that time. So I can go back and look at it. And I can also date it that way so I can know that if that was later in the season, it was not too late in the season. I know that because there wasn't a lot of uh, leaves on the trees. And I could see this guy coming from quite a distance. So, you know... <clears throat> Ralph Denisco Jr. going tomorrow and stink at calling. I gag on a mouth call. Any suggestions? Get one of these guys. Man, if you don't want to use the mouth calls, one of these or a box call, um, which I showed you, but I don't know where it ended up. Man, this desk is a mess. This is what working at home looks like. I wish I, well, I don't want to show you this. This is terrible. It's just strewn about. But. That one's louder. These are louder. They're very nice. They come in different ones. This one's a Quaker Boy, and it's a little bit high-pitched, but 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 what does it sound like 60 yards away? Probably some of those deeper frequencies are carrying. I don't know. But one of these guys, that is an old raspy hen. That sounds awesome. And, and you can't go wrong with the slate calls. There's, there's just really, they are win-win across the board. Box calls, if I had to just sit there... Probably the box call if I was brand new and just starting out. Um, I have every manner. Boy, these are real sanitary. The whole world's worried about a virus. Rightfully so. I'm, I'm not making light of that at all. But I, the whole world's worried about a virus. And I've got a bunch of turkey calls in the bottom of a um, box just laying there that we're going to go through. Just pick them up and put them in my mouth, right? And see where that goes. Hopefully, I'm the only one who's using these. I can't imagine somebody else is using them. But... But the thing about these, here's the difference. Well, there is a difference between these two, right? If you get a different box call, it's going to have a different frequency. Different kind of wood, wider channel, right? Maybe that makes a difference. The wider channel right here. Um, thicker, might give it a heavier sound. These, um, you can make different sounds with them. You can tweak them a little bit. These, depends on the striker that you use. and the strike, Depends on the pot call. They can all sound a little bit different. But man... Across the board, you can get these different calls and go through, and it's like, no, there's just no end to them. I picked two that sound exactly alike. <laughs> That's pretty funny. After saying that, then I get you two that are, they sound alike. Let's see what this guy does. I don't, man, these ones, I don't even know if I've ever used these. something there. This one looks like it's the same model. Those aren't bad. Um, here's another neat one too. I don't know if you ever, guys ever saw this. These old Primos ones, right? These ones actually have, I'll show you that. This is your typical one, right? This is the one I've been wearing out here. And it's just this tape. There's a metal half ring right here that, that bulge right there is just a metal ring some guys i was watching videos they take tape right off them which that's a good way to swallow it i wouldn't do that you got to be careful and you were asking about the gag reflex and all that stuff after you use them for a while that goes away fast for me it didn't i never i never that was never a problem for me for some people it might be an, a problem they can't overcome i don't know but then you got different levels of latex and cuts and everything else in here and then but look at the difference in this guy right look at that one this one has like a little plastic ridge on it to make it louder. <clears throat> and it was actually, when I was first starting, this made it a lot easier to use. But look at the difference in the size, right? There's a difference in the size. They don't, well, that's not really doing it justice. If I do it this way, see how much wider the, the darker one is, right? It's wider. Trust me, it's wider. It doesn't look that way in the camera, but, but it, it, it's wider and it feels different in your mouth. So that's the way it is. 
going back to an earlier comment, what do you do when you get out in the woods? You gotta, I gotta keep this fresh in my mind because the problem with turkey calls is I make all these calls and I watch the videos and I get comfortable with it and then I go out in the woods and I forget which call I'm gonna make and then you start second guessing yourself and before I know it, I'm back on a box call. So I will carry this with me anyway. Rubber band around it, people very very smart on that. You put a rubber band around it so this thing doesn't go, uh, go off in the car. It's kind of like these and don't ask me why I have this up here, but um, that is not a turkey call. But you got to be careful with these in, a, in, the, in your backpack because if that hole gets covered up, that thing's going to make sounds when you're walking. Anybody ever have that problem? <laughs> Back to the comments. Let's talk to, let, let me talk to you guys here. Now that you've seen, I've thoroughly embarrassed myself with my calling. <laughs> But boy, you guys are supportive. The fact that you're all here, man, we got a whole bunch of people on here, some new folks too. Um, if you have a decoy that sits on a stake, crossbows and broadheads, which I do, put a length of fishing line on that stake and run it back to the blind. You can tug the string, which gives the decoy life. Works very well. I thought about doing that. It's almost like a puppet, right? Like working a puppet a little bit, getting it just to turn a little bit, especially if there's if it's if it's affixed to that stake, so you got to pull it and it wants to fight back against you get a little bit more movement in there. They do tend to work pretty good uh, with the wind a little bit, but they're pretty stationary, right? And if you could pull it when that gobbler gets there, that might not be a bad idea. The other thing though, I do have one that's on a fishing rod and I, yeah, I'm a sucker. I bought this thing and it's a piece of fishing line that goes down and it dangles the hem decoy and that thing blows around the wind. And then eventually the rod tips over far enough to where it just sits on the ground. It is what it is. What are you going to do? Uh, Mo Pantsu. I'm still confused about zeroing in a dot site. I thought I needed to put the dot in the iron, but from testing it, it seems not the case. Watch my sighting in your crossbow videos. If that doesn't help, send me some Facebook messages or YouTube messages, and we will look it over and see what we can do. I don't know. Maybe I can help you. Maybe I can't. Lawrence Tomlinson is enjoying the scouting videos. I'm glad you're watching them and I appreciate it. I've really had a fun time with that. It's like a whole new world for me. The little box called Old Grumpy Hunter. If you're referring to the push and pull, that is a Quaker Boy waterproof easy yelper. And then the box call, this is a skinnier box call, higher pitched one, is the box turkey call. And it's not to be confused with anything else because it says turkey call right on it. So you can't confuse this with something else. I don't know what else you would confuse it with. Like you could keep jewelry in here and it would be a jewelry box. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Murder Inc. says that his dad has been using the same push button call for 25, almost 30, 30 years. It was a handmade by a man that raises domestic turkeys. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, those things, if you take care of them and you know, like the rubber bands and stuff, don't leave, don't just throw them in the backpack. If you throw them in the backpack, it'll go twist it around. I did have one that I broke. But if you carry them right, transport them right, they'll last. There's no reason why not. And then you can go through and you can chalk them up with the chalk that I showed you there. I do have a package of chalk. This has been used. Okay, I, you can open it up. I, I tend to keep stuff in the package, but, um, but it has been, it's been notched a little bit here and there where I've been using it a little bit. So, but I could probably stand to use that before the first part, before the season starts. Get up there and do that. But, so. Some great advice here, you guys. I really do appreciate it. My voice is going, or I'd read every one of them out loud. But I want you to know, I go back through this stuff, too, and I do watch the comments to see what I got, what I might have missed. So far, the box call is winning. <laughs> MJ Haas, the, the mouth call tickles the top of my mouth. They're a funny thing, yeah. They are just, yep. Jennifer Robinson, you won't find me using turkey calls on YouTube. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'm a glutton for punishment, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know. Put some chalk on your little yelper. I shall do that. Yep, that is not a bad plan. Crystal, they got the crystals. Yeah, the crystal is another pot material. I do like that stuff. And that's from Primos. You know, I like the Primos calls. I really like those guys. And I, I knew that I would have um, some kind of Primos paraphernalia in here. And I think 
this little guy right here with that little thing on it. If I remember correctly, that's a Primos. I think if I had better eyesight, if I had better light, yeah, that's a Primos. It says Primos on it. So that is a Primos. I'll keep that in that case. Let that dry out good. Get them all strewn about here. Set them out here so they start driving, drying out better. How do you chalk the box call? I just rub the chalk on. Um, I put chalk on here, and that works it. So what it does is it just keeps it from getting. It, I think it creates a little bit of a barrier so that it doesn't chip this because uh, it's like pine, right? It's like a light wood, and what that does is it just keeps it from wearing that out faster. I think is what it does. Yeah. Man, you guys are the best. I'm telling you. Oop. Let's see what we got here. All right, so you guys um, have weighed in on this whole thing and chalk the paddle and the edges of the box. Yeah, you're just rubbing the chalk on here. He's saying to chalk the paddles. Ooh, I did chalk that. Boy, you chalked that pretty good. I can feel it on here. Um, but yeah, you're in a chalk right in here, I guess. But I, you know, mostly I just put it on here. You're just, it's where the contact is. You're just gonna put chalk where the contact is. And you don't really need to worry about much else. These things are, they're pretty simple. There's a screw in here that holds it in, which I've never adjusted the screw. Um, believe it or not, this guy, as simple as this is, the little push and pull, that has a little wire in it that creates the tension. It's like a spring almost. It's just a real, it's really rudimentary. I mean, it's real basic. But that spring, the little piece of wire in there, and I don't know if there's any way I can show you that. Yeah, you can see it there. Man, the wonders of technology. Look at that. You can see that. That little wire. That little little wire is a problem because it comes out like this, and I sat there for the longest time. Now you can't use it. Now you're like, is, this, is that a good turkey call? That turkey right there has got the corona, doesn't it? It's got the coronavirus. <laughs> Um, but you got to tuck that in there and put it back in there. And I watched a Quaker Boy video a while back to figure out how to reposition that. You throw this in your backpack. The other problem with these things is you put these in your backpack, they get kind of beat up and twisted around. Starts working that screw a little bit. Again, the rubber band really helps with that. But with this guy too, if you got to keep them protected. It's no different from carrying the bleed calls in there, right? Those bleed calls that I uh, carry in the woods and they... they talk the whole way in there and even this guy this guy that'll make noises you know this sound in your backpack so carrying all these calls that's a struggle a challenge protecting the calls and then carrying them without alerting everybody and their brother what you're doing so um but that's why i like these man if i can get good at these then you got it made you know I just need to work on exactly the right sound. Let me sure I can get that. I can do like the clucks, you know. But I can make the sounds. I just gotta make sure they're the right sounds. You know what I mean? There's there's just no end to the sounds that you can make with one of these things. It's like a little trumpet or something in your pocket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lawrence Tomlinson, he liked the scouting video that I did when Genevieve told about the owl. Yeah, the owl pellet. I have gotten so much out of walking on these state game lands because I'm seeing different things. Like where I grew up, it's mostly maple and hemlock. That's the kind of trees. There's the occasional elm. There's some, you know, stuff that I planted. There's oaks that I planted. But when you go on to state game lands, there's oak after oak after oak, every manner of oak, different kinds of oaks. So you have to learn those. There's a lot of firs and pines and not hemlocks. Although today, this weekend, I did find some hemlocks, which was kind of neat. That's our state tree for crying out loud. I couldn't find any on here. But that's something that they've timbered off. They don't replace that necessarily in there. There you go. So now what we've got is um, the, you know, I saw some stuff today that'll make its way into the um, upcoming blog that I think was put there by the game commission. It was quite, quite uh, really 
I'm like, whoa, what's that? You know, um, but I'll share that with you too. So we've seen some neat and interesting things. The owl pellet was one of those things where I had no idea what in the world she was talking about, um, but it looked like a, you know, dog mess is what it looked like. But then you look at it close and you see bones intact in it. And essentially what it was, was a mouse that an owl ate and consumed it, ate the whole thing, can't really chew, so it swallowed it whole, and then it digested it, and everything it couldn't digest, the hair and the bones, it spit it back out. And Genevieve knew all this stuff, like she reads about that kind of thing, and she's just really into nature, and she's into bones and stuff like that. She's into taxidermy, she's kind of an interesting kid. So. But I'm just so lucky to have somebody to share that with, walk around on the state game lands. And, and even today, we had just a blessed time going out there. On, I mean, you know, she didn't go with me yesterday, but she went with me today, and we just had a blast. We really did. But that kind of stuff, when she can share that with me. Today we saw some salamanders, you know, uh, swimming around in the, in the uh, um, and I'm not fresh up on them as much as I should be, but we found a beaver pond, and there were um, salamanders in there. And that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Dennis Glock is telling us that he's used a turkey call to stop deer. There you go. Um, I, you know, I'll sit there and, you know, give him one of those to stop him. But a turkey call, if you can get a deer. That will stop a deer and perhaps not make it as alert if it interprets it as being a turkey. You know, there's a turkey in a tree so it stops or whatever. But it won't be as on alert as it would be if it was me, right? Greg Stravilla has the a vest. Yeah, I do have a nice vest. I've got one with the seat on it and everything else and all the different pieces. That really isn't a bad idea because then you can keep your box call right here so that it's not in your bag, not in a backpack. So there's there are other methods. There's no question about that. But just be mindful of that. I think that's an important thing because you're going to end up with either alerting animals or you're going to end up breaking your gear if you're not careful. But yeah, the, the vest is a cool invention. And that's awesome for the run and gun stuff when you're going from one spot to another and you can move to different locations and set up. That's what the best is great for. Oh, Jay Miller, there's a good tip too. You know, putting some toilet paper between your tissues or something like that in between the two so it's not rubbing wood on wood. That will make a difference. Moose Junction Hunter used the box or push button, the push box call to get them in close. Once they're there, use the mouth call quieter and you don't need to be quite as adept at the calling if you do that. You're using a box call, get them in there, and then when they get in close, give them the little clucks. Just a cluck or two to, to maintain the realism, right? That they've come all the way to see that hen, they see your decoy, and then you give them a couple extra clucks or something like that. That's a good point. It's a good point. You don't, you know, you can mix it up, and once they're in sight, just stick to the clucks, even if you can't get down the, the Yelps, you know, if you can't get the yelps down, if I'm not, if I don't feel confident with the yelps, I always feel confident with just a click, just a little bit of a cluck, you know. Just a little bit of that stuff, a nice quiet yelp, maybe. There you go. Can't overdo it, Philip Lang, 100%, I agree with you on that. I am, and I like your tip about the, you know, bringing the hen in and all that stuff too, absolutely. But overdoing it, that's the other thing too, is like, you know, I'm not gonna sit there and call all day long, but. Tim Adams never hunted turkeys. What's the difference between a Tom and a Jake? And the difference is age. A Jake is basically a fawn, kind of. It's like a, or a yearling. It's one that was born last year. They have a shorter beard. They have a, a little notch in your fan that sticks up, makes it like a keystone almost. In your fan, so it's just a it's just an age thing, and technically, I don't think a Jake is a Tom. I think a Tom is a reference to a mature male turkey. I think. Um, I don't. I don't think. I think the two are the, the 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 name Tom is reserved for the old Tom turkey, and the Jake is the young kid. Coolest thing when you think about it, it's like Jake and Tom. Like where where they come up with these names? That's pretty cool. <laughs> old grumpy hunter. <laughs> All right, toilet paper in between the wood to protect the sound. I've commented on that here, a comment or two before, and 
I should have thought of this joke. This is a great joke. But he said, yeah, you put the toilet paper in here, and that way, you know, it'll keep it from making the sound while you're walking to the woods. A great idea. And plus, you probably want to take toilet paper. If you're out there early in the morning and all that stuff, having toilet paper or tissues or whatever is a good idea. But old Grumpy Hunter points out, you, you probably have to, you still got to find toilet paper first. And with the pandemic going on, toilet paper was in short supply right off the bat there. People bought it all up, didn't they? Isn't that something? That was funny. That was a good joke. Go mouth call. You can switch between the call styles super easy from yelps to clucks to putts to purrs. Super easy and it keeps you going hands free. That's a good point. And the other thing I like about the old um, the mouth calls is if you've got like different mouth calls, they all sound a little bit different. And I've you know, kind of commented on that before. But you can go through and make slightly different sounds with different calls, you know, and they're, and they're you'll. You just got more options with these things. When I, I go to the dandy and I buy them uh, right off. They got a rack and you just buy them right off the shelf. <laughs> that one needs to be bent a little bit. You can take that metal ring if in, you know, I'm not telling you anything you can't find in a, in a better YouTube video, but you can bend these a little bit and make them fit in your mouth a little bit better. I really like that guy. I'm going to set him out here along with all the other ones and uh, play around with him later, To the much to the dismay of my family in the, sitting in the other room watching TV. <laughs> Frank Bruner's first ever spring turkey was a hen with a seven inch beard. Isn't that something? A seven inch beard. Wow. That is a trophy hen for sure. Um, <laughs> you guys, Mark Borger, really, um, you guys are killing me here in short supply. Yep, you got that right. Old Grumpy Hunter has really started something. I think that's like the theme of his uh, YouTube channel is you, he's starting something again. You know, that's kind of what he, what he, what he's doing. Stirring a pot, stirring a pot. That's what he's doing. Do you? Cut back your mouth calls to fit better. I have not. I got a big mouth anyway, and I'm, you know, <laughs> but you certainly can do that. In fact, there's one that I was watching. Um, I can't remember what it was, but I've seen so many of these videos. But there was one that actually uh, one company that when you buy one of their calls, it'll, I'll try and demonstrate it here. But like it actually has on it lines right all the way around here and then another set of lines, and then you can cut back the first line that if it doesn't fit, you can cut back the next line. And then there's a guy who's watching today that just takes all the tape off and it's just the metal ring. And he just uses it that way. So you do want to play around with them and get them to fit, but I, I found if you just take them real lightly and bend them a little bit, they fit just right, you know. Um, some of them, I don't bend at all, I just throw them in my mouth and they work. And some of them I can't make a single sound out of them and I gotta bend them, I don't know, they're all different. But they're not all different, they're actually all very similar. But sometimes some companies put more tape on them and there's a different size to them. So I found that that was the case. These HS struts, for example, Hunter Specialties, these ones, I can almost remember using these, but I didn't use them tonight. But these are a little bit bigger too. They appear to be a little bit bigger. Um, I like these little cases too that, are, that have the holes in them. Quaker Boy will sell you a call and it'll have a little hole in it, right, like right there. Because the other thing is these things get wet, obviously. They're in your mouth. And you want them to dry off. When they dry off, that's when they get a sanitary, you know, a lot of people put them in a the fridge. You got to rinse them off with water, dry them properly. You know, I would not share a turkey call with another human being. That's kind of gross, but 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 I put them in my mouth every year, and, and I and I feel fine. So, <laughs> uh, crossbows and broadheads. The black one was very good. Very good. I will make a point of that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. John Campbell, I have bearded hens on my place. Must be an inherited trait I have seen over the seasons. That's interesting. That is an interesting thing. Um, I can't see why that wouldn't be possible when you talk about the when you talk about white deer 
for example, some areas have white deer. I can imagine that hens with with beards is another trait that can be dominant in a certain area. Yep. <laughs> Record yourself, then play it back, then compare your calling to calls from actual hens. You know, we're to get the same pitches and tones. Uh, Daniel 1697855. Very good point. What I'm hearing in my head may not be the same, probably is not the same sound. That Certainly not what you're hearing over this voice, you know, the sound that I have. But uh, it's probably not the same thing. I actually should record that. Record it on my phone, but I got lots of ways to record things. I record it with my camera and what have you. But that's not a bad plan. Perhaps. In fact, I have recorded myself a little bit. I shot some vlogs this weekend. And we'll see how that goes. I'll, I will listen to that and see how those sound. So... Mark Borchert, no dry fire 2020. I am all for that. That sounds like a plan. No sound is a dry fire. <laughs> uh, have I ever considered the ghost, ghost blind? I think, is that the one? Um, I am interested in that. Can't use that for Turkey in Pennsylvania. you got to be covered 360 degrees around you and from above on a blind. So you got to use a pop-up blind, essentially, or a man-made blind that is 360 degrees around you and above. So... I can't do that for turkey, but I would be very interested in trying that for, for, for ground hunting for a deer. I am kind of interested in that, guess. Greg Stravilla, the hour goes way too fast. Oh, we're at the hour, aren't we? Well, I'm going to wrap it up then because I don't want to take up too much more of you. I don't want to sit here and dominate your whole uh, Sunday evening. I want you to spend some time with your families and all that stuff. And um, to put toothpicks between the latex so that they do not dry together. Very good advice. You get a nice toothpick in there, you put it in there so it separates that latex. That way they won't dry together and stick together. This one, for example, you can see that guy right there. He is pretty much, that is one solid piece of plastic. Um, sticky plastic. So that's that kind of thing. Man, you guys got some great stuff on here. Robert Peck hit, hit the nail right on the head. I want to thank you guys for joining on here. And I'm going to type something before we get out of here. Thank you guys very much for joining on here. I was wondering, I was worried really, because I wasn't sure this was going to be an interesting topic. And boy, we've gotten a lot of people on here. And I'll wrap up with one answering one last question. Um, the what broadhead do you use on turkey, John Campbell? I am going to use, you're going to want the most accurate broadhead you can use and I'm going to use the same broadheads that I use for deer. I don't have a separate plan. Um, that's just what I'm going to do. I'm not taking headshots. I did a video on this before. I have given a lot of thought to killing a turkey, a spring gobbler or otherwise, with my crossbow. And shooting them in the head is not for me. That's not the plan. I'm using a regular broadhead. I'm looking to disable them through with a good wing shot, maybe, tail feather shot, something like that. Hit the vitals. That's what I want to do. Thank you all so much for joining on here. I will see you guys later. Thank you very much. Man, can't wait to talk to you again next time. I hope you all are staying healthy in all seriousness. Until next time, kaboom, there it is. <laughs> Thanks, you guys.